Welcome to Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox, and today is the third episode with our wonderful guest who is talking about the pivotal moments that make them the leader they are today. I really hope you enjoy the episode. I can't wait to find out what's in store. Welcome to the latest episode and our final episode with Matteo Gori joining us from Italy. Welcome back, Matteo. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> um, look, we have had, I feel like we've been on this massive journey together over the last couple of episodes, learning what makes you um, the leader that you are today. And also in last week's episode, um, the way that you view gains in leadership and how that's helped you strengthen your team and the way that you lead um, as a result now. Um, but uh, just a quick reminder for everybody, Matteo is the Global Marketing Director of Barilla, Barilla Foods in, not Foods, Group even, in, I've got food on the brain, you see, um, thinking about what's for lunch at some point. <laughs> Um, but I bet if I were to have some pasta, I, in fact, I know this because I've been to Italy several times, my pasta wouldn't be as good as yours. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm pining to come back. <laughs> I'll have to make it happen, won't I? <laughs> please do, please do. Happy to have you. I will be sure to let you know. So, um, food aside, today we were we are going to have a look at the pivotal moments that have made you the leader you are today. Um, and I think, you know. If we if we look at our life story, if you like, um, you know, we think about a, a kind of linear process of moving forwards. In reality, you know, there's peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs. And um, if we say that we're going up in age from zero to to wherever we are now, you know, it's never a straight line. Again, it's all over the place. So those those peaks and sometimes the troughs, in fact, often the troughs that make us the people that we are today, because that's where you could almost say the magic happens, although we don't see it at the time. I think you mentioned this in one of the previous episodes. It wasn't until later that you realised the experience with your parents being cashier in their shop that you you that set you up for some some of the success later in life because you started to interact with different people, understood the importance of money, understood the dynamics that different people bring. Um, I mean, you even talked about understanding their personalities and how some people just wanted to be quiet and make the transaction and leave and where others wanted to have a chat because perhaps they were lonely or, you know, it, it's fascinating that at six, seven years old, that that was happening naturally and that then you were able to understand that later in life. Yeah, and, and I, you're absolutely right. And uh, uh, thinking back of those moments, thinking back to when I was helping out in, in my parents' shop, uh, some of our clients had seen uh, not only me uh, being uh, born, but like my dad being born and <laughs> grew up and then me, etc. So. There was an attachment to it and there was an element of you know of, of as you said of truly understanding what each person might be going through in that specific moment in that specific day and the same person could be uh, quiet one day and talkative the next day yeah um so it was it was very powerful and and i the more i think about it and the more i'm i'm, I'm grateful for that you know for that opportunity mm -hmm. um of course my parents probably does, don't know and didn't realize they were doing me a big favor. They thought yeah. I would do them a favor, uh, but then actually it's more the opposite, the other way around. So you're right. I mean, there was one of these moments that I only later uh, acknowledge as, as a key mm -hmm. definition, a key moment of definition for, for where I am and where I, where I stand today. 
Yeah, well, that that is fantastic. And what a what a great life experience, as we would kind of say, to to help bring you and and shape you into to who you are. And to have it so young is is truly wonderful. And um, I know that you know what happens to us in those early days. We're sponges, aren't we, as kids? You know, yeah. we we just take everything on so easily. And yet now to go and do a course and learn something you know, it's, it's just really hard to <laughs> apply the brain because there's so much other noise of life. And, you know, what am I going to cook for dinner tonight? Um, how am I going to get little Joey to school tomorrow? And because somebody's let me down with the lift and um, this and that's all going on in the busy brain when we're trying to take on new information. And some of the things that helps help with that I always think is when you're truly passionate about the thing you're learning you will make space you know there's nothing worse than trying to learn something that you really just are dispassionate about for one to, you know for the best way to say it um because it just doesn't give you any energy it, in fact it's it's energy draining is probably a good way to say it because you you just can't get into it so knowing those things that really make you tick and those opportunities that we talked about last episode as well seeing those opportunities and being able to take them to give you energy and learn new skills and you you know expand your capabilities um is is quite quite insightful yeah and and i realized only at a very late stage you you might say how important it is to get to know yourself better increase your self-awareness really understand what drives you what mm. motivates you what you know what gives you energy and on on the other hand what maybe drains your energy yeah uh, um, so that you know you can acknowledge these things and 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 look for more of these energizing aspects of your professional personal life mm -hmm um so i you're absolutely right it's it's a critical thing that i think everyone should try and go through um where they feel ready for it where they feel the the hunger for it mm. i i mean we might call it connecting with your purpose we might call it um uh similar things but i think it's of it's, it's of paramount importance because the the noise around us has just been increasing and increasing and i think it will continue like that um, mm. because of the role of technology etc in our lives so connecting with ourselves at the truly deep level is, is mm. of paramount importance yeah absolutely um matteo and i think a lot of people aren't sure how to do that um, and if if you've been with us for the last couple of episodes, you'll know. But in case you don't know, connecting with our purpose is how Matteo and I met um, when we were just um, perhaps knew less of ourselves before the uh, few days started. And by the end of it, we had done that deep work and really sort of peeled back the layers um, and realised why we get out of bed in the morning and what that means for us. So I've been dying to ask you, Matteo, can you share your purpose with everybody today so that they know what makes you tick? Sure, yeah, more than happy. But uh, before before I do that, just to build uh, on the um, uh, attention and, and uh, teasing a little bit, I, w I, was, I was thinking back on how I got to those days with you where I got to know you. Uh, Ooh, yes, yeah, please and, go for it. And you were saying something just a, a couple of minutes ago, so true that we think of a linear approach and, and it mm. isn't quite often. So uh, this was uh, summer, uh, beginning of autumn 2019. I'd been yeah. on, on my current role at Barilla for a bit more than one year. I'd been truly appreciated and and to a certain extent promoted so you might say is one of those moments where everything is going fine great uh, but i was a little lost um i was uh, you know i was playing a role where i needed to be completely different from my previous role so i needed to grow 
some skills maybe that I had not had so uh, prior. Yeah. And I had forces pulling me in different directions. Mm. And on one hand, I didn't want to look like I was going in too many different directions. So I was totally not knowing what the business needs were and what my vision for the business was. And on the other hand, I didn't want to look like a stubborn uh, person that doesn't listen to anyone and only goes his way. So I turned to HR saying, can, can, can there be a way to uh, work on my um, authentic leadership and authenticity? And they found that that program that I enrolled and where I got to know you. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm quite grateful that, you know, they connected the dots and brought me to work, to do this work on myself, which allowed me to know me better and, 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 and know my purpose better. So hmm. um, at the end of those days in London, which we did in, in December 2019, my statement is the curious professor, so the element of curiosity, I'll, I'll go back hmm. to that in a second, deeply connecting uh, people and, and ideas to create the magic. Yeah. Um, and, and so my purpose statement came as after these days. And, and if uh, for the people that have been listening to the previous episodes, you have seen already some hints to, to that. So there is the element of curiosity, which I was describing um, earlier in the other episodes, which is mm. so important for me. Uh, yeah. Curiosity about people, dynamics, about, you know, what, what's behind uh, decisions, what's behind the, you know, the curtain to a certain extent. Mm. Is that word professor, which um, has to do also a little bit with the stage element, which I had mm. discovered in the last few years, it was quite interesting and important to me, and it was driving me, uh, but not professor in the sense of I'm going to teach you, and you're going to listen, but more mm. as, a, as a catalyst for people's passions and curiosity. Uh, that there is that piece about connecting people and ideas. And we had mentioned that in the other episodes, connecting the dots is one of the things that really drives me. And, mm. and one of the things that I've been told since I was a kid is, ah, you can bridge different worlds. I mean, you can, you can be at ease and make actually connect people that are very different from each other. This was, mm. Uh, said to me when I was a kid, it has been said to me in my uh, professional career, uh, etc. And to create the magic is is that place where uh, all the people around me grow, improve um, the business, of course, as a result, but starting from the people, not the other way around. Mm. And where, generally speaking, everything eventually makes more sense than it, than it made before. Um, so that, that's my, that's my purpose statement and I'm, I'm very happy to share it with you. Oh, I'm so delighted that you, that you did. And it, it's fascinating, isn't it? And we know the, the sort of work that went into it to, to get you to that statement. Um, and it is just, just pure magic anyway, to have, have the statement and understand what goes behind that, um, and helps us know you you know, just that little bit more again. But, um, you know, in terms of some of the defining moments then that brought you to that moment where you could argue you were in a great place, you had a great job, everything was hunky-dory, mm -hmm. for a British saying, <laughs> um, you know, and that you felt like something was missing. Mm -hmm. you know you didn't quite use those words but so I hope I'm on the right lines here Matteo you know that's often the kind kind of support I'm giving to executive leaders nowadays that are getting to that point where on paper it all looks fantastic so they're almost like well how dare I be a bit unhappy or a bit lost like you say or or have a little doubt in my mind, how dare I? Because on paper, life is peachy. So why have I got this thing somewhere in the back, just going, you know, ticking away, yeah. when it's not not quite right, you're not there yet. Um, you know, some something else needs to happen for you to then make the next step forwards. So it's really interesting that that you described it in that way. 
but what are, what are some of the other moments then that have either completely changed a direction for you that you weren't sure you were going in? Because in that first episode, you, you talked a lot about confusion and not, not being clear on what the path in front of you might be. Yeah, and, and, and I've, been, I've been thinking back about that also. Um, and to be honest with you, I've been trying to realize that this, uh, this confusion, as I described it in, in the first episode, which is still a part of me today. I mean, and you, you can look at it as confusion or you can look at it as hunger, as curiosity. Mm -hmm. uh, so also, I was, as you said, um, I was being maybe a little bit harsh with myself. Uh, there is an element of me being, you know, open, uh, wandering, uh, challenging myself. As, as in the summer of 2019, where things were going great on paper, but I felt something else was was missing. So that is an element of me, and it's probably going to stay with me for forever. Uh, mm -hmm. I can see that uh, growing and, and, and getting old that doesn't make that element uh, go away. So it's probably plugged in very deeply. Uh, <laughs> and but yeah, so there is an element of, of curiosity and also an element of. Um, looking for challenges not necessarily meaning a different role but even mm. with the same setup personal or professional looking for uh, for other things um and i was thinking back i mean more or less at the same time of 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 me um discovering my purpose statement that what did i describe mm. uh, i turned on some things that were not there with me uh prior so i i turned on some hobbies which i didn't have before uh, okay. I think is one of the ones that have been, let's say, uh, improving the last few years. Um, I became a volunteer for uh, a civic volunteer in Italy on, on the COVID-19 vaccination campaign. Mm. Um, and then eventually, and this happened at the end of last year, I added to my role at Baril, etc., uh, another role, which is a university professor, uh, associate professor. So. I wrote in my statement the curious professor because of the stage element, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and that became a thing that I actually really do. Uh, <laughs> so it's 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 funny sometimes how we don't know ourselves at all before we do that yeah. work and we dig in a little bit, etc. Um, but you're right. I mean, I had had some key moments in my life. I'd mentioned some of them in the first episode. So yeah. now my parents in their in their butcher shop. Uh, mm -hmm. Looking how they uh, how they reinvented the shop and their lives in in the mid '90s, where they were already in their 50s, and you know, you know somebody else might have said, "I'm just carry on for a few years and then I'm gonna retire." Mm. Um, the um, the high school uh, for sure, the university choice, and also what I what I did within the university. I mentioned that I studied economics. What I didn't say is that um, I chose economics because I could build, uh, of other, among other reasons, because I could build my uh, um, exam selection a lot. So I chose out of the 30 exams that I had to do to get my degree, 20 were decided and 10 were up to me. And, and within right. these 10, I went so wide and wild, you might say, from uh, social history to uh, uh, international development to you know completely different things. So really going from one place to the other. Um, I had that moment in, in that first project they gave me consulting in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. That was so uh, enlightening. It's, it was a project about helping the most poor areas of South Africa uh, accelerating on their business and social development. Yeah. So it was perfectly connected with my, me, with my, uh, let's say, uh, academic background, and it was so stimulating. You would travel to those areas, and you, you mm -hmm. know, really face how business and 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 social aspects and and infrastructures that are all interrelated into one. Uh, mm -hmm. You cannot look at one slice of the story uh, and mm -hmm. forget everything else. So I've had had a lot of these moments uh, that really brought me. I mean, if I say where I stand today, it seems like I feel accomplished. I'm not. I don't feel accomplished at all. And as you might know, an element of hunger, an element, an element of challenging myself, uh, will always be there. But uh, let's mm -hmm. say 
at this stage of my of my of my life. Mm. And what makes you say you don't feel accomplished? Because again, on paper, all the things that you've done and the stories that you've shared today, that's huge accomplishments and achievements along the way. That doesn't take away the curiosity and the need for for wanting more challenge and all of those things. But interesting how you view where you are already. Well, um, you're right. And I quite often ask myself that question. Um, and, I, and I discuss it with, with, my, with my wife and with my closest friends. Um, and, and again, it has to do a little bit with, with who I am, um, of something, let's say, truly, uh, truly deeply plugged in me. Uh, and it also has to do a little bit, it's probably something that my parents taught me about how you can always build the next chapter. Uh, don't wait for, you know, don't stay on the chapter and don't wait for chapters to come to you. Build what is not there. I mean, uh, again, my parents were, they run a shop. They were entrepreneurs of, of, of a very small scale. Uh, but eventually they, you know, they built that, they, 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 uh, grew two kids, uh, um, allowing them to study in the best universities and with very good professional um, paths, etc. So I think it has a lot to do with that. I probably mm -hmm. grew up in a context, and as you were saying, when we were kids, we were so, we were so absorbing everything that's around us. Mm -hmm. I probably grew up in a context that was really, you know, stimulating and never, never sitting down where, where you are. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, that's a really good point. Never, never um, staying still yeah. is a, a nice way to look at it. But what I would counter that with is always ensure that you celebrate in the moment where you got to the achievements that you you make. Because if you just keep moving forwards and you don't see any of that, that's a, again a, another way of, of losing opportunities to to celebrate life because again I think we've touched on this somewhere in the last few episodes you know that you we always focus on on the negative and we find it hard to focus on the po positive that's a very general generalized sweeping statement but you get the idea um, that uh, you know let's pause for a moment. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean the challenge, the 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 hunger for achievement goes away, but it does mean that you can celebrate in that moment and enjoy um, where you've got to. And I hope I hope you give yourself time to do that, Matteo. <laughs> it's so funny that you mentioned it actually, and you are so spot on. I'm, I'm quite impressed because uh, uh, thinking of this chat, I was thinking. Um, to what I would say to my twenty-year-old uh, as one of the Ooh, yes one of the angles that we might want to explore, and and I wrote let's say a, a mental note about uh, look for a balance between hunger and and satisfaction or or celebration of of, of those achievements along the way. So you are absolutely spot on. Uh, to be honest with you, that has been. Uh, an improvement area, as we call it in, in, my, in my word, uh, for me. Um, yeah. I think I've been I'm better than what I was a few years ago. A few years ago, I was all about the next challenge and I need yeah. to add and, and I want to learn more, do more, etc. Yeah. Um, so I've been, I've been betting, getting better at that, but you're absolutely right. That balance is key. Um, and again, because it has to do with, you know, that that motivation cannot become uh something that eventually drains energy from mm. you uh mm. so we were we started this episode if i remember right about what gives you energy what what drains it away yeah uh, you yeah. just need to make sure that a positive thing i would say in my case this anger this curiosity etc doesn't become its own its own enemy and its own your own enemy of mm. Mm. Uh, actually taking energy away from you yeah, absolutely. And having that insight and that self-awareness, yeah. um, you know, will will help you with that. And you're already on this journey. Um, and I'm I'm always there with you, Matteo. You know that. So uh, I'll help remind you along the way. <laughs> but uh, goodness me, what 
what fascinating things we've dipped in and out of this last few episodes. I mean, it's just been such a pleasure to talk to you and learn more about who you are and why you get out of bed in the morning. And um, I love that. I love a serendipitous moment and the fact that you had Curious Professor in your purpose statement and then pretty quickly afterwards actually did some resident professor work with the university is just just serendipitous and, and fantastic. Um, just out of curiosity uh, for reminding me, but to share with the listeners, what was it you were lecturing on? I was uh, lecturing on uh, competitive positioning and branding new products. So you might say what I do, what I do for a living. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, but of course, I decided to interpret that uh, as a quite wide brief. Uh, so I mm. tried to bring to, to the students as many examples and as many connecting the dots, uh, hints from very different worlds uh, as much as possible. Because uh, mm. I tried to instill, let's say, that curiosity that I feel to have also, also into them. Uh, so that, that, was, that was quite nice. And, and the, other, the other thing that I was thinking, again, about what would you tell to your 20-year-old self? Mm -hmm. um, and we touched on this, actually, in the first episode. I would, I would, let's say, invite myself to be patient that things will make sense when you're ready. Uh, because, you know, as I was at that age, I was quite confused about what university and then afterwards about what job and... Mm -hmm. And I got where I am in terms of path, probably because of a number of, of choices. And I feel now that things make much more sense, uh, mm. all thanks to the work that done on, on purpose. So, and I know, I mean, we talked also about your, your kid. Uh, I know how impatient the, the newer generations can be about, mm. you know, their future, their choices, etc. So I will really, you know, invite that, that uh, 20 year old Matteo being, you know, uh, just relax. Uh, yeah. The story will unfold when when you're ready to read it, so to say. Don't don't rush into it. Uh, don't know if, and probably if I was me at 20 years old, I would not listen to that advice because it's such yeah. a, the usual advice that a, a older person gives you. But uh, I would still give it a try, probably. Oh, Matteo, you made me think of something really lovely. Then that's a little memory in my in my history of life and it was when I was um PA to the general manager of the London Hilton on Park Lane would you believe in in my history and um he was a really fiery Italian <laughs> but at the same time he had that beautiful Italian spirit where everything was very relaxed you said the word there yeah and um, I remember coming in to the um, his office one morning with his usual espresso in the morning that, that he liked um, with his cigar in those days. <laughs> Can you believe that you could smoke in the office? <laughs> and um, show my age now. Um, and Oh, I'm I'm going to totally embarrass myself because I have to do it in what in my head sounds like his accent. And his name was Giovanni Riach, the most amazing and, and kind and lovely and fun guy. And he said to me, hey, Paula, why you get so upset all the time? <laughs> That's a terrible accent. <laughs> but you get the idea. It gives the idea, it gives the idea yes. You know, what, the point was, why do you worry about everything? all the time and my answer to him was so that you don't have to <laughs> you just reminded me of him because as you said you know just relax <laughs> oh dear so, too funny a nice memory to to um make us giggle well, it's been absolutely fascinating to hear your story, Matteo. Thank you so much. And I hope that you'll agree to come back and see us again in the future where we can maybe get the next chapter of the story. Would you of be course. up for that? Of course, I would be more than happy. And, and thank you for, I mean, these this three 
chats have been very enriching and you know as you said it connecting some dots uh, which uh, I wasn't I wasn't doing so thank you again also for that oh you're so very welcome I'm glad you've enjoyed it too I've got so much from it and I am pretty sure our listeners will too so thank you again Matteo and I'll see you soon take care take care bye bye everyone bye Thank you for listening to Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. This has been the third episode and final episode for a little while anyway, with our guest who shared their pivotal moments that make them the leader they are today. Again, I talk about uniqueness a lot. Every guest story and their pivotal moments, the challenges they faced, the issues they faced over the years to get to where they are now and how they pulled themselves through all of that makes them the leader they are today and each one of those stories is unique and different. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat with them and see what that meant for them. Now, once again, it's your turn to reflect on what you've heard today see what resonates for you and think about what that might mean for your leadership moving forwards. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox and I look forward to welcoming you back next time on Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Bye for now.